Hello, this is me uh, under glazing a Minnesota shaped pie plate. It is made out of stoneware and it will be fired again and be food safe so you can bake in it. The beginning of my process, I actually soak the stoneware in water and sometimes add additional water to make sure that those underglazes will flow and blend together. And it takes at least two, sometimes three layers of underglaze in order to achieve full color. And I blend the strips of color together. So I'm using sunset colors with yellow nearest the what will be the horizon in the distance where the sun is. Uh, above and below the yellow, I use orange, a stripe of orange. Above and below the orange, red. Above and below the red, I use a violet. And the pinkish looking stuff is actually a deep blue. It just looks pink when it goes on. Now I'm already on to the details. The Again, the black is an underglaze, so I will paint on two to three layers to make sure that that underglaze is on with intensity and I will remember to reflect down in the water anything that I do above. So if I make a tree form, there's a tree a little wider at the base, skinnier at the top. Those are just the, the trunks of the trees and I'll do similar right down below, reflecting down below with a sort of a similar angle. Sometimes I will actually work from the side and imagine it like a, a butterfly sort of a format to where whatever I do on the, my right side, I do on the left side. So instead of having it vertical, I sometimes turn it to the side. So if that's angling outward, and upward, I want to go similarly downward at an angle so it looks somewhat like a reflection. And when I do a detail like a branch, I start kind of tangential to the trunk, and then they're like S shapes that that slope off from the trunk and curve outward and then S a little bit toward the sky, like curve in an S shape a little bit toward the sky. So for every branch I did above, I wanna make sure I do a similar branch down below, but opposite. And I can also add some wiggliness to it, to the reflection, to show that movement that might be happening in the water. Reflections don't reflect perfectly when the water is wiggly. The, the reflections get little wiggles. Sometimes the reflections even get broken, but I don't get that tricky. This this one is a, sort of a Bob Ross inspired happy little trees. Just, flowy little blobs on each side, little blob to one and zigzagging across it with blobs and similar down below. So I continue to add various types of trees, smaller little triangular shapes to represent trees off in the distance or some texture on that other side. And it's okay if the bottom of that land form has some different texture to it because there might be rocks sticking into the water that aren't a reflection from above but actually a, an object down below. Some, some of those little small smudges just represent distant trees or some texture.
there might also be shapes in the foreground. Perhaps you are sitting on land while you are looking at this, and or there's a piece of land sticking out. So toward the bottom of the plate, I sometimes will add some tall, grassy, reedy things or stones or some texture. And occasionally I like to put a, well, I decided it needed a little bit more trees here. Occasionally I like to put a little something floating in the water, like a duck or a loon or a canoe. Um, not always, but sometimes I like to put a little something in the water. I wanted more trees to fill in here rather than a duck. That's pretty much it. And then I'll continue to go over it and add a second layer of black. Here's an example of a plate I did a few months ago. Thank you so much for watching.